If, like me, you grew up in the British educational system, then you will be all too familiar with the Norman Conquest of 1066, which culminated in the Battle of Hastings. Or maybe you've just had that Hastings direct jingle stuck in your head. Either way, the Norman soldier is pretty iconic. So in this video, I thought I'd show you how to paint one from Victrix Warriors of the Dark Ages line. My first step after building and adding the miniature to a base was the primer coat. This important first step creates a better surface for your paint to stick to, but by choosing a particular colour it also gives you a chance to make applying your scheme a little easier. This colour choice is often down to personal preference or the project you're tackling. Personally I went with a black primer and applied it with my airbrush. This black base colour will help with achieving some of the deeper shadows of the model, but feel free to choose whatever base colour and application method that you prefer. You may have also noticed that I kept the shield separate. This just makes painting both the Norman and the shield much easier. After priming, the first area to tackle was the chainmail. I wanted this to have a dark iron appearance and so began with a coat of rough iron. This dark bronze paint was thinned out a little on my wet palettes before being applied across the chainmail. This surface is very detailed so make sure that you paint it into all of those deep recesses. I tried to keep my application neat here, just because painting over metallics with non-metallics can be tricky, but if you do overspill, you can clean up any mistakes with some matte black. I then created a mixture of equal parts rough iron and gunmetal to create a darker version of gunmetal. This was used to base coat the remaining weaponry and armour, which left me with a slightly darker starting point than if I'd used gunmetal alone. I also applied this over the chainmail, but I used a lighter application here and a little less pressure than with the other areas. This caused the paint to only accumulate onto the raised links in the mail, leaving the darker base coat of rough iron still visible in the recesses. Over these metal areas, I then applied a wash of dark tone. I made sure to apply this evenly across the surfaces so that this black wash flowed into the recesses. Once dried, it created the appearance of shadows, helping to add some depth and definition to the surfaces. To finish off the metal, I highlighted just the edges and upper areas with just a small amount of the brighter plate mail metal. This created a strong contrast and was great for picking out the sharper cutting edge of the sword for example. After this step, I made sure to thoroughly clean my brushes and change my paint water. This just stops the metal flakes from the previous paints contaminating the non-metallics that I'll be using in the next few steps. To paint the gambeson that was just visible beneath the hauberk, I started out with some wolf grey. This was thinned out a little of the water and painted in a couple of layers to ensure that a smooth finish was created. The result was a faded blue that I would build upon in the next step. To create a lighter version of Wolf Grey that I could apply as a highlight, I mixed in a little arid earth. This created a lighter mixture without washing out the colour too much. With this mix, I then carefully picked out just the raised edges of the cloth. This helped create a strong definition against the darker shades of blue in the recesses. This base coat and highlight method was then repeated across the other areas of the model. The first of these were the trousers and for this I started out with a base coat of werewolf fur. Once again I added arid earth to the base coat to create a lighter mix which was then applied as a highlight. To paint the wrappings around the lower legs as well as the wooden interior of the shield I started out with monster brown which was followed up by a careful edge highlight of monster brown mixed with arid earth. The final areas to be painted in this method were the leather parts. These were quite numerous including the trim of the hauberk, the belt and the scabbard as well as the shoes. After the base coat they were highlighted in the usual manner by mixing in some of that arid earth. Before I moved on to the skin and the final few details I wanted to give those last few layers a little definition with a wash. I chose strong tone for this. The brown hue of this wash would create a slightly dirty and faded look which would add to the battle-worn appearance of the model. Like before, just make sure that you apply the wash evenly across the model to prevent it from pooling too heavily in one spot. When painting detailed models like this, it's often better to paint the model from the more recessed areas to the more prominent. Such was the case with the bronze detailings here. Many were placed on top of the leather strap so it's easier to paint these particular details last. For these clasps in the pommel and the cross guard of the sword, I used some weapon bronze. This was carefully highlighted with some greedy gold. 
Finally, these bronze areas were washed with some strong tone to help tie in the previous couple of layers together and boost those shaded areas a little further. Once again, I made sure to thoroughly clean out my brushes and paint water after these metallic steps. For the skin, I began with a base coat of cobalt skin. When painting skin, it's important to apply several watered down layers. This will just ensure that you get a smoother and more realistic looking texture and color. To help bring out some of the details, especially around the fingers and the facial features, I then applied a slightly watered down layer of flesh wash. The skin was then completed with a few fine highlights of corpse pale. I didn't use arid earth for this particular highlight as you can very easily make your skin tones look overly pallid or have a strange hue to them. With this paint, I carefully picked out details such as the knuckles and the facial features. At this point, the model was complete, but I still had to tackle the face of the shield. I chose to use some transfers here, but before I applied these, I first created a layer of matte white over the shield. This was painted on in a couple of layers in order to get a nice, clean surface to apply the transfer to. The particular transfers I used are from Little Big Men Studios, and they are perfectly sized for use with these Victrix shields. I began by using my scalpel to carefully cut away one of the shield's designs. Once removed, I peeled back the plastic film from the front and then pressed the transfer face down onto the shield. A little water was then painted onto the backing paper, just enough to soften it up and allow me to press it around the contours of the shield. Now this is a slightly different manner of transfer application and is probably closer to the way that temporary tattoos work. Anyway, I gave this water about 30 or so seconds to soak in. From here, I carefully began to peel back the paper. If you follow the steps correctly, the transfer should be stuck to your shield. After giving the transfer about 24 hours to fully dry and properly adhere to the surface of the shield, I then gave everything a coat of matte varnish. This not only sealed in the paintwork of the transfer, but it also removed a little bit of the glossiness that was created by the washes. And with that, the model was complete. And here we have the completed Vitrix Norman Soldier. This model was a joy to paint. It had a great amount of detail, which made these washes work really well. The kit itself is also fantastic, so I'd highly recommend checking out some of Vitrix kits if you're into historical wargaming. It's been a while since I've tackled anything pre-World War II on this channel, so it's been nice to go back and paint something with a sword and shield that isn't also some sort of fantasy paladin. So if you enjoyed this, then please do leave me a like and a comment about what other miniatures you'd like to see me tackle in the future. Now, if you're interested in picking up some of these and painting them yourself, I'll include all the paints that I use, along with some links to Vitrix's website in the description below. But before I go, let me just say a huge thank you to my ever generous Patreon supporters. Currently, my top supporters are Jonathan Hart, Ryan Little, Stuart Smith, Tim, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Dakota the Destroyer, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Limborg, Mr. Grimm, and Swedsman. So, a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links. And it is the kind-hearted people, such as yourselves, that allow me to fund the kits and tools required to build these videos. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.